YouTube, what the crap's going on? Air of Carthage here, and I'm gonna be back with the faction focus. This time we'll go ahead and watch the, well, no, you know, I wanna have the conversation first. We're gonna talk about the Aravaki today, Aravachi, however you say it. Um, and the Aravachi are a, an Iberian tribe along with the Lusitani. They were added in the Hannibal with the Gates expansion. Um, they are a fun camp, or a fun tribe to play, both in campaign and in multiplayer, though they are not a power faction at either. Um, but I, I enjoy them just because I kind of like the Iberian tribe. So let's run through a little bit about who they are, what they're good at, and uh, what they're not good at, so that you know a little bit more about them. The Noble Cavalry of the Aravachi are actually the strongest uh, barbarian cavalry in the game, and probably some of the strongest melee cav in the game. It would be a pretty tough fight between these guys and Ozit Knights. They might beat the Ozit Knights. Um, so these Noble Cavalry also have a very big charge bonus, so they're not quite shock cavalry when it comes to that charge, but their charge bonus is big and it's dangerous. Um, they do have expert charge defense, but of course Maximus showed us that that's only good if they dismount, so that's pretty retarded. Uh, this ability increases the cost of units, I'm sure, and it doesn't do anything. I don't recommend using wedge formation again with them either. Um, they do have an encourage ore, which is helpful, and of course they can hide in the forest. So what are these guys good for? Uh, they can be deadly when charging unbraced infantry. They are deadly in rear charges, and of course uh, you pretty much uh, the only cavalry units that you would want to be wary of charging head-on with them would be like cataphracts. Um, that would probably be about the only thing that really hurts them badly. Um, so they are very good cavalry. Of course they're expensive, and you want to be careful. As a choice for a general, it can be a good choice sometimes. Um, but if you're really, you know, with the Aravachi, one way or the other, your general's at pretty big risk. Noble fighters don't have particularly strong armor, and they lose to Oathsworn, so that can be a risky place. And then same thing, horses are always a risky place for your general as well. And losing your general with a faction like this is bad. So you're going to want to consider what your situation is, and then decide which general you want to pick. Noble fighters is your other option. These guys are some great infantry. Um, they're not as good as Oathsworn, just right off the bat, tell you that. I don't know how they stack up against, um... Uh, crap. Swordmasters and Heroic Nobles from the Iceni. I don't know how that matchup goes out, but I would think that it's pretty similar to the Osworn. Uh, and the main reason is because these guys probably have a little lower armor than those units. They do have good melee defense, uh, even though I think the other ones have still better melee defense. Let's look at the Arverni real quick. They do. Um, yeah, better armor, better melee defense. Yeah. And then let's take a look at the Heroic Nobles real quick, too, just so we can make that comparison. So, Heroic Nobles, same armor, better melee defense, yep. So, Heroic Nobles would probably still win. Yeah, maybe, it's hard to say, charge bonus is 32, 38. Eh, that would be a pretty close fight, actually, between the Heroic Nobles and these guys. So, I think the, uh, the Noble Fighters, of course, have a better charge bonus. The lower armor can definitely play a difference, though. They do have Headhunt. They do not have shield wall, and that's going to be a big detriment to them. And see, these guys do have shield wall. The Arverni Osworn and all other Osworn have shield wall. And I'm pretty sure that the Swavy Swordmasters also have shield wall. They do. So that's going to be the Noble Fighter's big disadvantage to the others. So in certain fights that they probably could win, um, like if you just look statistic-wise, they probably could beat these guys, but with the shield wall there, they wouldn't. And that's going to be your challenge. So, yeah, it looks like that's... So that's why Noble Fighters can be risky, depending on who you're playing against. Now, these guys will trash Roman Infantry, big time. As long as they get a good charge, they will wreck Roman Infantry. Very good weapon damage on them as well. So let's take a look at their melee infantry. Iberian Swords are always a handy choice. These guys can hurl, like, five Solaferum Javelins each with 120 men in the unit. That is deadly. Very nice Javelin range. It's 80 range. These guys can be absolutely useful in a cav fight. They can provoke a cav fight by hurling javs at enemy cav and making them charge, and then your cavalry can get the enemy cav without being countercharged. They are useful at throwing javelins into the back of high value units like Oathsworn. Uh, they can be useful at throwing javelins into enemy skirmishers. They are very useful at taking down elephants. Iberian swordsmen have a ton of uses. They're not particularly fantastic in melee, but they do have decent weapon attack and damage for their price. The reason why they're tough is because their armor is very low, which means they're very prone to missiles, and they're very prone to cavalry charges, so beware of that. Scutari are kind of like a beefed up Iberian swordsman. They don't have as many javelins, um, but uh, and their, their charge bonus for a barbarian unit is pretty lackluster, unfortunately, but they have very good melee defense and decent armor for their price, so they're a decent mid-tier sword, um, though they do not have shield wall, so again, against other mid-tier swords like sword followers um, or... Fierce Swords, 
of course, Fear Swords have Frenzy, so that'd be dangerous. Um, yeah, against those other mid-tier swords, it's going to be rough for these Skutari, but they can be a decent mainline infantry against Hoplite factions. Uh, these guys can give Romans a decent fight, but they'll lose in the end, probably because of their armor um, and their attack being a little lower. But again, not a bad unit overall for the price. Painted Warriors are kind of the same stats as the uh, Skutari, but they have a much higher charge, which is great. And they also have a scare effect, and they also have Frenzy. Um, and with a Frenzy charge, these guys can do a ton of damage. So... They're kind of a glass cannon though, their armor is only 45, uh, so they are very susceptible to missiles. So you have to be aware of that, but these guys can be very useful in an army if you kind of intersperse them in the army. And then uh, get a nice frenzy charge, start to punch a hole uh, in enemy troops. Uh, the, the painted warriors can also have this scare effect here. So if you're able to get some rear charges, some flaming javelins, maybe time that in with these painted warriors. The Arbachi have a, a deadly tool. Guerrilla Warriors can deploy anywhere on the map, except for within the enemy's deployment box. And that can be useful whenever you're looking to set up an ambush. It can also be very fun in campaign battles where you can ambush the AI. Good stats, except for their armor. Um, these guys also have decent javelins and a nice charge bonus. Uh, beware of the armor, they're going to be very susceptible to enemy cavalry. If they get rear charges on enemy though, they're deadly. Spear Infantry, Iberian Spears aren't good for much, um, but they are kind of, kind of equivalent to Levy Freeman. I think Levy Freeman are probably a little better but they can still be useful in that respect. Skutari Spearmen are actually pretty tough Spearmen and they have a counter cavalry tactics and shield wall, which means that they're a lot more uh, sturdy and are actually a pretty good unit if you can get them into a cavalry fight after it's started. These guys are pretty good at finishing it. From a missile infantry standpoint, you got Iberian Slingers, which are just your standard cheap Slingers. Um, they can be useful if they get to late game and they have ammo left, but you know they're very weak, they have low morale. Uh, they're not going to stand up well to elite skirmishers, but good for maybe dealing with horse archers in a cost-effective manner. Uh, Iberian skirmishers, not a particularly good skirmisher, uh, but again, they're cheap, and what they lack in power or usefulness, they might be able to make up for in price. Could be useful at knocking out elephants or supporting calf fights. Balearic slingers can be gotten uh, in any numbers uh, by the Iberian factions, which is pretty handy. These are very powerful slingers, and being able to bring them in larger numbers than three can potentially make you a deadly skirmish faction as well. So, from a cavalry standpoint, you've got Iberian Cav, which are basically a really high attack, low armor, scout light cavalry. Uh, they're armed with swords, not spears, so they're not going to be particularly good against other light cavalry unless they get in without a charge, because they do not have a bonus versus large. But these guys are absolutely deadly if they get into skirmishers without being shot at. Uh, because of their high attack, they will mop up skirmishers. Sometimes even skirmishers that are a little too heavy for most light cavalry to take out, they'll do good against because they have very good weapon damage and attack. Again, though, their morale is kind of lacking and their armor is too, so they can't take sustained fire. They can't take a charge from a heavy cavalry, but they are fast and they have high attack. Celtiberian Cav actually got a buff in recent patches, and they are not bad now. They've got decent melee attack. One of their problems though is it's still going to list them as medium melee cav. It's too bad these guys aren't listed as heavy. Uh, that would help them out a little. But they're relatively quick. They have good stats. They have a 15 bonus versus large, which is very nice. And they can do a lot of damage if they get into a cav fight without uh, being uh, charged. They also have frenzy charge, which can be useful to increase your charge speed and bonus. Um, whenever you're going into the back of enemy infantry. Uh, using it against other cavalry may be a little more risky because you probably won't kill that cavalry unit quick enough and then your guys are going to get really tired. I might see this as more useful into the back of enemy infantry at a key moment. But uh, very good melee defense too, which is a, a huge factor there. Very good charge bonus as well. Um, and then of course the Noble Cab we've already seen. That's the advantage for the Arvachi. Both of these units have a very nice charge bonus. They don't have access to Shock Cab, but both of these units can be deadly in rear charges. Cantiberian Cav, uh, or Cantabrian Cav, sorry, um, is going to be a high missile damage um, Javelin Cav, but they don't have very good melee statistics. Uh, decent base morale, though, I guess, for a cavalry unit. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't see these guys being particularly useful unless you're worried maybe about coming up against cataphracts or something. Um, if you can get them to throw javelins at high-value units like that, it could be useful. The problem that you're going to face is you'd have to defend them against horse archers uh, for most of those factions. But again, slingers can do that. So that's probably the only potential use I see for them is getting rid of enemy heavy shot cav. Uh, that covers the units for the, uh, the Arvachi. Let's go watch a battle. And see whether I use them well, and see how it works. All right, no, right here. So I fight against Massilia with the Aravachi, um, which is a matchup that I'd be more than happy to take with the Aravachi. The Thorax swords are not particularly strong, 
Um, Massilian Hoplites are not going to do particularly well versus my Swordsmen. Um, Axemen are best against high armor targets. None of my guys have particularly high armor. Um, so again, it's a matchup that I actually like. And I decide to split my army into two wings. I've got two Celt Iberian Cav here. Three Painted Warriors intermixed with three Scutari. And in this battle, I'm going to go ahead and admit, uh, pathetically, that I didn't realize that these guys had Frenzy, and so I don't get to use it. I'm sure it's a great um, ability, though. Um, I have a Noble Fighter General, and then I have one Scutari Spearman here. And then over here on this side, I have four Iberian Swordsmen, three Balearic Slingers, backed up by two Celt Iberian Cavalry. So this flank here is going to meant uh, going to be meant to disrupt my uh, opponent. I want him to be worried that I'm going to be firing into his flank with his slingers, and if he has any skirmishers, I want them to have to focus their attention. Oops, have to focus their attention here on this flank. That way, my Skitari and my painted ones, who are somewhat vulnerable to missiles, should be able to get nice charges into his mainline infantry while his skirmishers are firing at mine. If he brings cavalry to charge and try and get through my swordsmen to my slingers, I'll be able to get javelins off, and that'll be a lot of javelins, and then I can just simply counter charge in with my Celt Iberian Cav, and my opponent's going to be in pretty bad shape there, and of course I can just pull my slingers back. If he attacks me with infantry over here, it's also not going to be real cost effective for him because it's going to take infantry away from the more dangerous fight up here on the hill. These painted warriors get a clean charge on the axe warriors, even without frenzy, and absolutely trash them. So this will give you an idea of where axe warriors are going to excel. Uh, but see, they've already taken losses too, because they are fairly light units. So in a prolonged melee, it's not really the best thing for them. Uh, but fortunately, they, they will do well against the axe warriors. I get charged here by axe warriors. That's actually a good charge for my opponent. And then in this mainline engagement, his hoplites don't have a very good charge bonus, so they're going to get hammered uh, by the Skitari here, plus they don't have high attack. My noble fighters are going to absolutely destroy those hoplites. And then here I've got a painted warrior that's going to really do a lot of damage to this Massilian hoplite. Um, so we'll watch that here. The Massilian hoplite, though, does have a lot higher armor, and it has a decent charge. So it'll do a little better there. Yeah, so most of the engagements are going quite well for me. I'm going to tie down enemy hoplites over here with my Iberian swordsmen. That's actually not a bad engagement for them. They'll get a number of kills there on a more expensive unit. These Thorax swords will eventually punch through my Iberians, but I have my slingers here. And notice this Celtic warrior just gets absolutely wrecked by my Iberian swordsmen, and that's because I hit it with a lot of slinger fire before I charged it. And then I'm keeping a Skitari spearman here. My opponent does engage my cavalry out here successfully without me noticing. But then uh, he blobbed into one unit, and so I'm able to counter charge back into a citizen and a Massilian Cav. And this fight will actually eventually grind out in my favor, I believe. Uh, he is bringing in some uh, light hoplites, though, and I'm chasing those light hoplites with Iberian swordsmen, so that's why their morale is going down. He's going to try and escape with this Massilian Cav, which is actually a pretty good idea, because he can try and put some pressure on my slingers, so I'm going to have to bring in my spearmen to try and stop them. Uh, the mainline engagement's going very well for me. My noble fighter generals already mopped up the hoplites as expected. Over here, though, my opponent got some Hippias that he pulled through this engagement and then came into my back lines. Um, it is actually really hard to pin down a heavy cab unit like this with Celt Iberians because they don't weigh enough. Um, so the, these guys did pull right through the combat into here and didn't take a whole lot of losses, but now I'm going to start chasing them my cav and that rear charge was pretty devastating to the painted warriors fortunately they were already beating the axe warriors really bad and so it wasn't a decisive charge i'm lucky that he didn't go after my general there but notice how he's going to just keep trying to run away and keep trying to get kills with these hippeus uh fortunately though i am kind of catching them and they should get bogged down and destroyed the fight has not gone well for my opponent overall his iberian spearmen actually did all right versus these levy freemen um, and then I'm going to get Painted Warriors in here, and they're going to absolutely destroy the, uh, the Levy Freeman. So yeah, Yaravachi versus Massilia, I actually kind of like that matchup. Uh, Massilia has better light cavalry. Um, the Yaravachi have better infantry. Um, I think the Yaravachi just have the overall um, advantage there. So yeah, my opponent's being chased by Spearman, and if he turns around, uh, he's going to get shot in the back too, so he can't do anything there. The Massilian general is finally dead. Manages to get a, a number of kills. His bowmen are still alive, and it's actually going to cause some problem for me. He's got three mercenary Gallic Hunters, and they are firing into my general right now, which I hate because that is a high-value target for me. Fortunately, this little bit of scrub here gives my men some cover, and I get a wrecked uh, Celt Iberian Cav into these uh, Gallic Hunters. Now, Gallic Hunters can shoot while hidden, which is handy. But they don't have much armor, and they don't have spears or anything like that to defend themselves. I almost think this would be a cooler unit if they would give them a two-handed spear for when they went into combat. That would be really cool. 
uh, because then they might be a little more handy. My opponent's just going to get wrapped up at this point, and I think that this battle shows some of the strengths of the Arvachi pretty well. Um, against factions who lack units like Oathsworn, um, or, or the others that I mentioned, they are going to do very well. Um, and it's because their, their swordsmen are quite cost effective outside of those type of engagements, and their cavalry is also quite cost effective in the right scenarios. Now, heavy horse of the Bowiei or the Arverni would be more than a match for Celt Iberian Cav, but uh, the noble Cav of the Arvachi are very dangerous um, and would outdo pretty much any other barbarian Cav that I'm aware of. So yeah, just a mop-up process at this point. We'll kind of zoom in here and let you see some of this action up close. There's some Massilian calves and uh, hoplites uh, duking it out to the end against my Iberian swordsman. Yeah, pretty sweet looking action there. Not the kind of fight that hoplites really want to be in. Hoplites can hold okay versus some of the Iberian units, but um, they're not going to win that fight, even in hoplite phalanx. So yeah, that's a close victory for me. Good game to my opponent here. Um, picking Massilia was probably not the best choice for him, and I think that with more Celtic warriors, he would have been better off um, than Axe warriors. Axe warriors don't serve as much purpose versus Iberian units, whereas the Celtic warriors mixed with the Thorax sword line instead of Hoplites would have been a lot more dangerous to me. Absorbed my charge with the Celtic warriors, finished me off with the Thorax swords who have the higher armor and the shield wall. Um, and then, of course, he probably could have kept my cab at bay with some tricky play uh, from some Massilian cavalry and some levy freemen. So I, I do think Massilia potentially has the tools. I like using the Aravachi, though, uh, in, a, in a match against Massilia, would be fine. So where else would the, the Aravachi be uh, a decent faction? Um, they're kind of fun to try against Rome, though it is very dangerous uh, because the noble fighters, the only infantry you have that can really do a lot of hacking down to the Romans. You could try some kind of crazy ambush tactic. Again, all very risky because the Romans are very stable, heavy infantry, whereas your guys are fairly light infantry. Um, they'd be a fun faction. I wouldn't want to go head-to-head -head with the Lusitani, I don't think, because the Lusitani... Yeah, no, actually, that would be a fairly interesting match. Lusitani have veteran shield warriors, which are better, but then the Arvachi have better cab. That'd be an interesting match. They're kind of fun to play against the Barbarian factions, though you will be at a disadvantage to the Arverni, the Bowiei, and the... Yeah, definitely against the Arverni and the Bowiei. Possibly against some others as well. They'd be fun to play against Greek factions, I think. Um, they, I wouldn't necessarily give them the edge every time, but that'd be a fun matchup as well. Anyway, that's my two cents on the Arvachi. Hope you all enjoyed it. I'll be back soon with more faction focus.